to this three-part series. This is part two of the three-part Elevated Entrepreneur series. And uh, in part two, I'm going to be going deep into the spirituality and purpose element of the Elevated Entrepreneur. And so in the last episode, uh, we went deep in the business side of the Elevated Entrepreneur because when you're called to make a difference in the world, as you most likely have been if you're listening to this podcast, um, you know, the fact is if you've been called to make a difference and you're in this world and if you're listening to this, you're living in the physical reality of our world, okay? And the physical reality requires for you to get your message out about how you want to change the world and help people it requires that you have a vehicle to to do that right and that vehicle needs to have processes and systems and uh and you know a way that's you can well processes and systems that are replicable right to start and a way that you can leverage your time and energy so that it allows you to help more people Right? And then that vehicle also then provides you with income that gives you the resources for you to live in a way that supports your personal, professional and spiritual growth. So in this episode, I'm talking about the spiritual side, and uh, the spirit and purpose element of the Elevated Entrepreneur. Okay, so, and I'm going to tell you how it all works together because that's the key part, right? So over the last 10 years, I've delved deep, deep, deep into understanding the spiritual aspects of myself and how I help other people. And in that journey, I've come across some people uh, who reject the idea that spirituality and business go together. And even some who believe that being spiritual means that you should have no interest in money. And although it's clear to see where that thinking comes from when we look at the evolution of human consciousness um, through the work of Dr. Claire Graves. And I, you know, I discussed that a lot more in episode 35 and 36 around motivation and behavior. It, it doesn't really make sense though, right? To say that this is true. If you're spiritual, you shouldn't have money or the spirituality and business don't go together. Um, and if you feel like right now for you, that there is some discomfort rising as I speak about money and spirituality being linked, hold on to your hat, my friend, because I'm going to deliver in this episode and it's something I'm, I'm very, very passionate about. So as I said, if you're listening to this podcast, you are in fact living in the physical reality, right? Where the way we master our physical environment is with money right? That's the tool that we use. We use money to buy food, to pay for electricity, our insurances, our clothes, our housing, our transport, gifts. Um, you know, that's how we often are charitable. You know, we donate money. That's how we pay for our holidays, our healthcare, our education, our furniture, you know, recreational experiences. Pretty much everything that we do, we use money for right? We use money for. That's what we do in the physical reality. Now, of course, this does not mean to say that there are things of great value that we experience without money. Of course, there is. There's loads of things. There's love, there's connection, you know, there's all those kinds of things. But it would be much more difficult to experience those things if you had no, no, no money. Okay, because if you didn't have any money right now and you're living in, in this reality where we are, where we everyone uses money to get their needs met, if you suddenly didn't have money, right, you would have so much focus on how you're going to be fed and housed and everything else that it would be very hard for you to be having those experiences fully that don't require money. Okay, it's very hard to, to, to um, experience deep loving connections with people when you you haven't got food on your table, right? Like that's, you have to have your basic needs of living met generally to experience those other things, right? That's, that's kind of given. But somewhere along the line, people started to be conditioned about money in a very negative way, right? So, and, and this is the question, can 
people use money for negative purposes, for non-spiritual purposes, right? Can people get so focused on getting money in any way possible without it being fair to the other person, right? Without it being having a spiritual purpose? Well, yes, of course they can, right? Of course they can. But what it doesn't mean is it doesn't mean that if you want money or you have money or that you make more money, it does not mean that that makes you bad, right? Of course it doesn't, right? So this is this is the complex equivalence that we have to look at. Can people use money for negative purposes? Yes. Can people use money for non-spiritual purposes? Yes. Does it mean if you have money that you're going to be non-spiritual? No. Does it mean that at all? Okay. It doesn't mean that at all. And, you know, I've even worked with people that say, oh, you know, well, like, you know, um, Mother Teresa had a vow of poverty. I, I can assure you Mother Teresa was able to, um, she had a lot of power over a lot of money. She might not have been using it to, to update her wardrobe or her skincare or anything else, but she was traveling around the world, right? She was doing a lot of amazing things. She wasn't doing that without money, right? She, she had money. And so, you know, it's really important that we get clear on this understanding so that we can, in fact, bring spirituality in as part of our, um, being this elevated entrepreneur so that our business and our purpose is connected with our spirituality, not in opposition to it. And this is really important because if we look at the cycle of life and evolution, right, and, and we come from... There's a diagram. I'm going to be teaching this in the upcoming webinar, actually, that I've got coming up tonight. It's going to be on tonight. Uh, Ancient wisdom um, to amplify your results. And I'll, there's going to be a note in the show notes, um, link in the show notes that you can register. But if we look about uh, look at how you know we come from spirit and we come down to matter, right? Physical reality, and then we return to spirit. Okay, so unless you, I don't know, don't believe that you've got any spiritual connection, then this probably isn't the podcast for you. But for those that do, appreciate that at some point you're in consciousness, you're in spirit, you you get born into this physical reality. You're a um, spiritual being having a physical experience. And then at some point in time, that physical experience ends and your consciousness or your spiritual, you know, journey continues. You go back to spirit. And so this is also shown really in the evolution of consciousness, right? And our values, levels of thinking is that mastering business is actually part of our spiritual journey because it means you are learning how to get more specific than the, the mental and emotional level of consciousness, okay? Because you have the spiritual plane and you have the mental plane, you have the emotional plane and you have the physical plane. And to to you're here in the physical plane so you have to bring spirituality down to the physical plane you can't be a human in the physical plane and experience spirituality in the spiritual because otherwise you it's just consciousness right the purpose is to bring it into physical reality and that's where it's more specific and so uh, you know spirituality is abstract you know and it gets more specific mental gets more specific emotional gets more specific and then physical is the most specific and it's physical actions it's physical material things it's very specific there's nothing abstract about you know your phone or your clothes it's they're specific right they're actual things and so you know even if you look at Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs self-actualization at the top of that pyramid does not come before having your physical needs met right it does not come before having all of your safety needs, having all like all of your physical material needs met. Doesn't happen. Self actualization doesn't happen before that. We've got to be able to master that physical reality to get to that self actualization. And so, you know, this is as as above, so below, right? How can you truly understand how to master spirituality if you don't have if you don't understand how to master your physical reality? Right. This is this is really important. And so, you know, a lot of the work that I do through coaching people in life and business deals with the conscious and the unconscious mind. Right. So we look at NLP, time mind therapy, hypnosis, coaching, you know, communication. It's a lot of stuff to do with the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. And um, but that's not the end of the story. We have a higher conscious mind. 
right? And so if we only focus on the conscious mind and the unconscious mind, we're going to have a limit on what on our own growth, okay? So if you can limit your growth, if you ignore that spirituality side of yourself, the higher conscious mind um, and your energetic connections to self, right? Self, capital S, others, right? Your purpose. And so this is where the elevated entrepreneur comes in, right? Is when you're connected to all of these things and you're doing business and we're going to the mindset and communication next episode, then you, you create this magic spot where you're here on earth living your purpose, right? Making a positive impact on the world, helping more people. None of them go without the other. And so it's through the spiritual practices that, um, I, that I've adopted. I've become aware of the way our energy and potency can be diluted and how you can actually rectify that, right? How you can call your power back. And so one of the powerful processes um, comes from the ancient Hawaiian wisdom of Huna. And many people are familiar with, you know, when we talk about ancient wisdom, and, and I know this come up a bit when I did a post about it the other day, when you talk about ancient wisdom and Hawaiian practices and people say, oh, ho'oponopono. So ho'oponopono has been, been made very popular um, and there's, you know, some different people that have that talk about that and they mostly focus on the forgiveness prayer which is I'm sorry please forgive me thank you I love you okay and and so the problem though with that I, I love it and I very much learned this uh, forgiveness prayer you know some time ago and I've used a lot it can be very powerful but there's actually much deeper connection to this and what this is actually about right and it, and it all comes back to what is our projection, right? Because as I mentioned before, as above, so below, as applies to so within, so without, okay? So your projection of what's going on around you with others and, you know, what, how you're perceiving the world is very much connected to what's going on inside of you. And uh, and so there's a, there's an energetic way. So we can we can look at projection, from the perspective of conscious and unconscious mind, but there's also an energetic connection and there's also this spiritual connection that we need to be aware of and how much we can be leaking out our energy or our life force energy when we're not aware of these kinds of connections that we have. And it all comes together in a, in a very amazing way. And I'm going to be talking more about this. Like I said, there's a webinar tonight, Ancient Wisdoms uh, to Amplify Your Results. The link's in the show notes. Um, and if you miss the um, webinar, there's a recording. If you're listening to this later on, pick me up. I'll get you the recording. But I want to go much deeper in this and actually going through a process where you can actually um, become aware of where you are linking energy through these connections, energetic spiritual connections with others, okay, that you may or may not be aware of and how you can call that energy back to yourself so that you can be more in charge of your own energy and you can then direct that energy in a much more powerful way that's going to create a bigger positive impact on the world. It's going to help you evolve, okay? So when you work together on your spirituality, your business skills, your mindset and communication, like I said, I'm going to be going into that more in the next episode, and you you, you step into being this elevated entrepreneur, okay? You serve your purpose. You help more people, right? You evolve yourself uh, and, and you continue to make that bigger impact on the world. And so this is the thing that I really want you to consider, right? This is the thing about spirituality as well, because when people don't have their connect, connection to spirituality, right? When people are um, often in this space of feeling like, oh yeah, like there's some things that I want to do, but am I really good enough? Um, can I really do it? Does anyone really want to listen to me? Um, and and very limited thinking, right? Very limited thinking. It's very contracted. Okay. Um, it's a lot more fear-based. And when we're in, like, if you look at the map of consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins and the um, the emotional scale, like there's a there's a tipping point of courage, right? And courage is at about 200 hertz or just over. 
And um, and the emotions below that, when we have things like anger, fear, guilt, apathy, you know, shame, jealousy, all those kinds of things, they're all much lower frequencies. And from underneath the tipping point of courage, all those lower frequencies, when people are predominantly in those, their energy is contracted. Okay, their energy is contracted. And when they're around other people, they are draining, right? You feel drained when you're around other people. When people are contracted, they're in fear. They don't act. They they don't actualize their full potential, right? If we think about Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, these are the people that are still just trying to get their basic needs met, right? There's all this fear that they're going to, you know, be rejected or that they're going to go broke or that they're going to, you know, whatever else, right? Those low level fears from the point of courage and above is where we become expanded in our energy, right? And that's where it moves to enlightenment and self-actualization. And that's where we have, you know, we have courage, we have happiness, we have joy, we have love, we have, you know, enlightenment. We have all of these much more uh, higher frequency emotions. And that is where we become expanded. And so when you're around people who are in those frequencies predominantly, you feel more energized, okay? They have a greater impact on people around them whether they're working on themselves or not okay and this how much energy we've got um available to us and whether we are leaking our energy to the people that are draining our energy or if we are um, clear on our boundaries and we have practices that bring in our energy that infinite connection that we have to source energy to consciousness Right, and we we can forever keep filling this up, and and this is exactly how I um you know I I sometimes teach for seven days straight, right, with no days off. It's seven days, like eight, nine, ten hours a day for seven days straight. And people say, Tony, aren't you exhausted? Well, no, I'm not. Yes, I get a bit tired and I have a day off at the end, but I'm not exhausted because I am. I have the energetic boundaries, okay, with where my energy goes. I also have this connection, a spiritual connection, a connection to source, so that I have that connection to the infinite amounts of energy that are available, right? And it's all tied into my purpose and what I'm doing, right? So why, what am I there for? The purpose that I'm there for, what it is that I'm giving, what do I really believe that I'm, you know, is the purpose of me delivering this training, okay? When I'm delivering a training, it's not for the purpose of just making some money, Right? That's not the only purpose. And that's why people get such great transformation. Right? That's why people get such great tr transformation because it's so linked to my purpose. My business of what I do is so linked to my purpose in helping people who help people. Right, So it's, it's helping people transform. It's giving people the skills and the tools so that they can make a difference in the world. Okay, So that they can raise their frequency and they can naturally have a bigger impact. So you know, I know that when someone comes through and does a training with me, even if they come in to do it for their own personal development, the shift that they're going to have is going to have a positive impact on unlimited amount of people around them, okay, whether they decide to coach with those skills or not. Just because the evolution of consciousness that they go through with themselves, the frequency that they shift, that they become more expanded, right, they have a more positive impact on the world. Right. So it's this is where your purpose and, and this is what I really want you to know. Right. If you're listening to this podcast, I know that you're here doing the work that is important to you. That's important to the world that you've been drawn into this. And so I'm really hoping that this has gone a long way for you to be looking at how you bring spirituality into business and why it's so important that you do. Right now, I know I haven't gone. I, there's only so much I can talk about you know, this spiritual practices and everything in one episode of the podcast, I'll be sharing more of it. But definitely um, tonight on the uh, webinar, I'm going to be going live. It's going to be for an hour. I'm going to go much deeper. I'm going to go through sharing one of the processes in, uh, like I said, it's um, a much more intense process of Ho'oponopono, where everyone who jo joins me on that live is going to get to go through that process and very much have an experience of bringing power back, right? Bringing energy back, setting some energetic boundaries, resolving some of those energy leaks so that you have more energy available to you that you can then uh, direct into the work that you're here for. 
that you can have more purpose about how you use that energy so that you have the connection to that ultimate amount of energy that is available to you. That you get that connection to that you are much greater than this physical reality. Okay, because it's these spiritual connections, it's this, uh, this knowing that you are much greater than any kind of limitation, right? So when you have these connections, when you really get this spiritual connection to yourself, right? The self, the self, capital S, others, you're not limited by these old things of am I good enough? Does anyone really want to know? Because you know that you're much, much greater than that. All right, so um, my question for you, right? Next week, I'm going to be going into how, um, you know, the mindset and communication work ties in with the spirituality and the business for the elevated entrepreneur. But my question is for you, like, who would you be if, if you were deeply connected to the ultimate truth, the unlimited truth of who you are, right? that unlimited energy that's available to you right who would you be if you if you had that connection what would you do who would you help what's the difference that it would make because it's available to you it's 100 percent available to you and if you're ever in doubt if you're ever doubting yourself if you're ever in a space thinking oh my god who am i can i really do this stop it and get back to your get back to yourself get back to this connection right get back to the connection because I can assure you in higher consciousness in consciousness everything is perfect okay there is no oh how you use money or making too much money means that you're a bad person no none of that exists the divine truth of who you are you're here on earth to master this physical reality to help involve yourself and others and you're here at a very very important time so who would you be what would you do? Hope I see you on the on the uh, webinar tonight.